Managing GPU rentals requires effort a lot sometimes, and anything that can make it easier is a win in my book. If I only had a single web interface where I could click on each pre-configured connection. What's up? Everyone, Max Voltage here. Today, I'm going to introduce you to the solution, Guacamole by Apache. I'm going to show you how to install it in a Docker container in Unraid, configure it with your remote sessions, and how easy it is to use. So, let's get started. All right, we are going to wing this. I've seen a couple of videos. I think I know what I'm doing. But there might be a few mistakes along the way since this is the first time I am doing this. So let's give it a shot. So first off, I am in Unraid. We are going to head down to apps and updating content. And then I am going to type in guacamole. Actually, it's Apache guacamole. It probably would still give it to me, but we're going to do that. And this is the one we want. This is the one without a database. We want the one with a database. So we are going to go ahead and click install. Yep. I already know what the default password. That's kind of cool that it gave me that. All righty. Let's make this a little bit bigger so we can see it. Apache guacamole is fine. Let's see. Repository. Network type. So this one is kind of interesting. I could do a bridge or go to this one, which will give me most of what I'm looking for. I might have to change some of my networking in order to fully use this, but for right now, I am going to do that. We're gonna leave everything as standard for right now. We can always come back into these settings and make changes if need be. But for right now, I'm gonna hit apply and it will start to install. And it finished. Go ahead and click done. Now let's go over to Docker. It should be started. It is started. And let's go to the web UI. There we go. And we go guac admin, guac admin. Now trust me, we'll be changing this. Yep, of course we need to change the password. No, we don't need to save it because that ain't gonna last very long. We want to go to users. Go to new user, type in a new one. I'll end up changing this. So then of course we need to click all permissions and current connections, all connections and click save. We do want to save that. So now we have that one. Now we want to log out and log back in as this user so we can delete the other one. So let's go ahead and log out, re-log in. And now we're logged in. So again, go to settings, go to users and click on this and delete. So we have now deleted the, and if I made a mistake, I could just reinstall it. Not a big deal, but I believe I did it correctly. And we will find out when we start trying to add sessions. Now I need to create connections. We're going to start with remote desktop, which I don't think I have enabled on each of these machines. So I will have to go into these machines in order to make it work. But let's first start it up. So we're going to do new connection. And this is going to be RDP many hours later. In fact, it's the next day. I did a lot of research. <laughs> so basically windows remote desktop, RDP on guacamole is not going to work with salad. And it's not necessarily specific to salad. Maybe it kind of is, but generally it's WSL and windows are going to be fighting over that RDP connection. And with salad, salad does use RDP is part of what they do. So it's just not going to work. I did finally get it to work. But again, I think that incompatibility that where they're fighting over it was part of my problem. I had to actually 
change remote desktop settings in group policy, restart, and then finally I was able to get that connection. I kept thinking it might have been routing settings or wasn't sure, but it ended up being settings in the actual solid computer itself. Saw so many people struggling with that when they were trying to get RDP working. So kind of almost a relief that I don't have to worry about it. <laughs> probably won't be adding that many more salad rigs. Probably will be deploying more Linux based solutions with like Octaspace and Chlore AI, maybe more vast. We'll see, but really going to be focused on SSH Linux SSH connections. So that's what we're going to go over here. So, as you can see, I already have the Okta server done, but let's move on to another one so I can show you how it's set up. So let me go into settings, go to connections. We're gonna to go to new connection and it just so happens it's an X470 board with a 5950X. So we're gonna leave it at that. We are gonna do SSH. I just always like to have a maximum of one. I'm gonna put this information in cause that's the IP address and this one is dot 244 and then SSH is port 22. Okay. So now that I've done that, go down here, there's basically just one other spot. I want to touch on display color scheme. I want white on black. That's what I want. And then font size, we'll just go with default, but now let's just do 12 and I can go back in here and change it and we'll click save and then get out of this, go into home and click on that and we're in. That's cool. I really, really like this. So sudo su and I'm in. NV top and there's our, my NV top currently not doing anything on the system. I think this one has one out of the two rented right now. Not sure. They're very close together. As you can see, one's 36 degrees, one's 44 degrees, but I digress. But if I want to switch between, I just go over here. Now I'm in my vast Octo server Do NV top. Oops. And now I can look at what's going on with this server right now. Currently only two of the GPUs are rented out of the six, which is kind of a bummer. <laughs> I will have all of the sessions down in the bottom that I'll be able to switch through. So I'm just going to keep adding from here, all of my vast rigs. I'm going to be adding the same exact, well, almost the same exact. The only thing that's going to differ is the IP address and maybe the login information but everything else will be the same. And obviously the name of the connection will be different as well, but it's, you can really, really make things a bit quicker if you click clone down here. And now I've got a new one that I, let's just call this vast two SSH. And I need to change the IP address of this one, which will be dot 11. And then everything else is the same. Click save. And now I've got the next one. So I'm going to continue going through this, but that's going to speed up the process of getting everything completed, getting there. So definitely learn a few new things. First of all, this groups over here is not for connections. This is for users. So I deleted all the groups in here, the groups where I needed was the new group here. And so I have it down here, but I'm like, okay, but where's my stuff right now? I have no connections in here. Then I realize and I'm gonna have to do this as I go into each one location, need to click there and then click save. And you see, it's no longer listed here and now it's listed under there. So as I expand, as I change to different platforms, I want to make sure I've got things started out right. So I'm going to get all of these into that group. Okay. So I, I currently have a number of active sessions. I haven't brought all of them up, but it's working really well. So let me show you a few things. So obviously I've got them all listed down here. Let's say I don't have any 5090s up. So let me bring up that one. 
So now it's connected. Now, so I'm in this window. How do I get out of it? Well, there's a couple different things. One is, see this down here with the little arrow? You can bring that up and it will show you all of your other sessions. I'm curious to see what happens when I run out of space. But right now I have five sessions up. It's showing the other four sessions right now. So I'll be able to switch between all the other sessions relatively simple. Now, if you want to start a new session with something else, hit control alt shift and it brings up this little window and then you can go up here and go back home. So that's a real key keyboard combination and there is no other way to get back to this home screen once you're in that screen. If you're on the computer, if you're using this from a phone, then you just swipe to the right from the left side of the screen and you'll get this window that will open. So again, I can keep opening up. Let me get this out of the way since it's kind of in the way. Let's bring up this one. So I'm going to keep opening them up because I'm really curious. I haven't run out of space yet. That's six. So the next one will either make things smaller or I'm going to run out of space. So we'll see. Let's control out shift. Go back to home. And I have 5700X and unraid. So let me bring up my other 5090, which is that one. That is now connected. Now let's see what it does. Yep, see now it scrolls off the screen. I can still get to this one, but I don't think, yeah, it doesn't let me move things back and forth. So yeah, once you start getting here, you might not be able to get to all of your sessions, but that's quite a few sessions. And I almost forgot one of the other great things about this is the ability to just go in and download files that you might need like log files or things like that for troubleshooting to help out with the platforms instead of having to do like a cat command and copying everything, which is a real pain in the butt. And a lot of times doesn't capture everything. So it will make things a lot easier when it comes to any type of troubleshooting of bugs or anything like that, that might happen with the platforms. I wish I had this about a couple of weeks ago when I was having to go through that. So just wanted to add that one additional point. So I am absolutely loving this. This is going to make my life a lot easier. Right now, I am using basically a command prompt screen and bringing up SSH sessions in this. This is what I've been using. And it's a pain because I always have to look in my Unraid server or look at a list of IP addresses I've got and always restart them, especially if I'm restarting my computer. Now, if I'm restarting my computer, I don't need to worry about it. The sessions are already all in guacamole. This is, to me, a game changer in being able to manage things much more quickly than I was able to do in the past. Hopefully in this video, you discovered and learned that guacamole isn't just a delicious Mexican food. And if you like this kind of content, please hit like and subscribe to the channel. And also in the comments, let me know if this will change your workflow and how you manage your machines. I'd really like to hear your thoughts on using guacamole. Hopefully I showed how easy it can be to implement. Uh, and lastly, if you are needing some help, I do have a limited number of one-on-one -on -one still available. So there's a link in the description and in the pinned comment. So please go ahead and sign up for those and let me see how I can help you guys through any tough spots or in just planning out what you're trying to do. Alrighty guys, thanks again. I appreciate your time. And as always, no tabs were harmed in the making of this video. Have a good one.